Hello guys, it's Unders. So today, new plugin day. Waves have done a new plugin and we've got Abbey Chambers. Actually, it's Abbey Roads Chambers, but I've renamed it. Um, it's a new reverb plugin. It's very cleverly thought out, it gives some awesome sounds. We're just gonna dive straight in and have a listen to it. So uh, let's get into that. All right, so here we are in Logic and I've got open a project of a track I'm working on and we've added um, Abbey Chambers. I'm gonna call that Abbey Chambers. It sounds a lot cooler. We'll go with that. And um, I've just added it onto the main vocal. So not the vocal bus itself, but just the main vocal. So all our vocal sections are this lot here. And I think we've even got extra ad libs added in here. So it's just on the main vocal. So the overall would be this. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. However, we're just sending the main one to the chamber. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I'm massively overshooting it at the moment just so I can have a real listen to what's going on. But what we are going to do is just go over the workflow of this plugin. So the signal flow is relatively simple. Um, we're going in the input here, we then go down into the chamber section, through the steed section, through the filters, into the mix, and then back out to the output. With this middle window here, essentially just being a visual representation of some of the settings that are going on. Input, we can figure that out relatively easy. We've got a nice meter here to let us know if we're maybe pushing it too far. I've put it to zero dB, which is obviously taking into account the audio that's going into it. And that's by no means clipping, but we can push it a little too hard and it gives us um, a visual of that happening. And if that is the case, we've got an input control here and we can bring it down a little bit, just like a really subtle detail to note. I really like what they've done here with the control. So it, like visually, it looks as if you're directly over the input and the output is slightly off to your right. Look, the way they've got the um, like EMI style faders in there. So you've just got like a little bit of an offset on the fader onto the side. Just really nice little um, detail added in there. So like all these faders seem like they're right above you and then it just veers off to the right. Super subtle like uh, GUI detail, but makes such a difference just so let's just try pushing that I just have a little look at the input meter so this is what it is currently I should have seen it coming. and logic we can overshoot the orc so we'll push that up I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. you can see that it's pushing it quite a bit harder but we could just gauge that and bring it down using the input simple as that um, option control reset So this then goes down into the chamber section. So the chamber section here is really gonna change what you can see represented in this middle window here. Now the main one is chamber two, which is the tiled room from Abbey Roads. And you can change a few different things here. So you've got mics, you've got two different sets of mics. Um, it's not much point me explaining them to you. It's best for you to have a listen and we'll do that in a little bit. We'll uh, A, B them. And you can see they're all positioned here facing the pillars in the room we can also adjust where they sit in the room. So we've got room position, we've got room, wall, and classic. And you can actually just grab on the visual and just drag them. It will give you this little ghost vision of where they're gonna land. So we could put them against the wall or drag them back here. Uh, moving along in here, we've got the reverb type. Now when we change to mirror, which is a really highly reflective room, our mic type disappears and we've just got the two positions, the far and near, which are the sort of two recommended positions they would use at Abbey. And then we can move into stone. Stone is like, again, a medium room, but a lot darker. So stone is quite reflective, but it also dampens a lot of uh, range. So it, it works a lot like diffusers. Um, it's, both the one we've been so Par Street Studio in Liverpool, for example, has like a stone room and it's just a wonderful uh, like chamber sound. Um, so when we move across these as well, we have something called Time X just next to it. And what Time X effectively is, it's taking the 
natural length of the reverb and you can adjust it. So by default, it sits at one and that's 100% of like that natural impulse response of the room. If you dial it back to 0.5, it's going to be 50% of that natural impulse response. And if you whack it all the way up to 1.5, you guessed it, it's 150% of that natural impulse response. So on chamber two, we can change our speaker type. We've got a B&W speaker and we've also got the Alltech. b and is gonna be a nice, uh, like a warmer sound, more like a really high-end speaker. But it's got just a nice warm sound to it and clarity across the whole frequency spectrum. If you use the Alltech, there's gonna be a lot less low end and more focused on the high end. Now, the way I tend to use reverbs, I'll probably find this more useful because I tend to take a lot of the low end out. The type of music I make, um, having anything wobbling around in the low end is pretty useless to me because I've got kick drum happening there like four times a second and snares sitting around that range as well. And then a Reese all in there, it just doesn't necessarily work for me. I tend to use a lot of high end. So for me, that's really useful uh, to be able to swap it out. And then we can change the direction that's facing in the room and that changes the whole feeling of the reflection. So where it's facing here, facing the room at the minute, it's going to reflect off the pillars and then be caught back on the mics. And obviously depending where we place the mics, it's either going to like reflect around the pillars and come straight off the wall. However, we can bounce it around the room as well. So we can fire it off at this corner, giving reflections all around the room. When we change those sounds, it really changes the whole feel of the reverb. So this could be a useful little technique where you could use exactly the same settings on two different things. So you're using the same room, but just adjust that speaker turn to give a different feeling. We might try that out. I might do a separate bus with the backing vocals on. We'll use the same settings, but just turn the speaker and see if we can create a really uh, like diverse feeling around the vocals. So that covers all the different chamber setups that we can do. We then move down into Steed. And notice it's S-T-E-E-D. Now, Steed stands for Stereo Tape Echo Echo Delay. And that's based on the type of delay slash reverb that this system uses. Um, it was developed back in the 60s, I think, probably again during the Beatles recording era, because that seems to be when everything was uh, really established in terms of this like clever production theory. So what we're effectively doing is using um, stereo tape heads and you can delay one slightly to the other, or you can delay both just so they're a different delay to the signal. Then when you feed that back, that gives you that delay and echo or reverb, depending on the timings of that. And by doing it in stereo, you can delay them independently left and right as well, ever so slightly, and that's what gives you the width effect. So looking at the Steed settings, we have to engage it as well if we want it to be working. Otherwise, we're just going to run through this impulse, ignore Steed, um, ignore filters if they're off as well, and come straight out, which would just give us this. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the sun. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You're just um, taking away some of the flexibility you have. I should have seen it coming. Cool. So this works a lot like it would with most other delays. If you've ever used um, H delay, real similar sort of thing going on here. So we've got our feedback. Now, what we can do to find a good feedback point is over push it. Bear in mind, if you push it to 100%, it is going to ring out very, very quickly. So I tend to go to sort of the 99 region and then work it down from there. When you're pushing this uh, feedback quite hard, you're going to get you're going to hear the steps and sound and it's going to like ripple. You want to then dial it back until you can no longer hear that ripple. And I tend to dial it back another 10% from there because once I can no longer hear it, that's going to be an okay range. And I'll just pull it back a little bit further for almost safety. So we just do something like this. I ended up around 70 before. We'll see if we get the same feeling. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. There we go. So we've come down to 68 that time, but you can definitely hear that ripple, right? And how you back it off using the feedback. And that gets us to a nice place that works for this particular sound. Just a technique that I tend to use for finding my, like a happy place in terms of feedback. Now the delay at the bottom, is going to be the two separate tape heads and you can delay those out. They can be linked together or synced. So if we sync them, we can have them so they're both working on the same type of steps. If we do one over 64 triplet here. I should have seen it coming. 
I should have read the signs. It's always nice having a sync feature because everything can work perfectly in time. So if I was to put this in 1 over 64 rather than the triplets, it'll actually be uh, in time with the delay and reverb over the whole track. Which is cool and most definitely useful. However, if we want to do some cool stereo effecting, let's make sure, make sure link is off and make sure sync is off. And if we both go to like around a similar region-ish, even though there's a good chunk of difference there, we're going to get a much wider stereo effect. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the sign. And that's just making use of the like the Hass effect where you've got two slightly different sounds and your brain perceives them as being much further apart, even though like it, it's coming to you from the same place. Um, just a, a really great little trick that you can make use of because it's stereo tape delay. Definitely something I use a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure this is how the uh, Waves CLA vocal widening works as well. It does this like Hass delay effect to give you that perceived wideness. There is a trade-off here and it can sometimes cause uh, phasing if you convert to mono, but you've just got to check that in your mix and work it out. So moving on from here, we've got drive. Um, drive is actually tape saturation because obviously this is a tape emulation, taking the echo and delay into account. We can drive the tape, which is quite nice. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the sun. Sweet. So let's just listen to what the chamber's doing now, because it's pretty wild when, once we've distorted and modulated that. Once it was soloed there, I was getting a lot more of the ringing, so I've just backed it off to what, about 45? So distorting just the reverb section there is just a, or just the delay section there, sorry, is a nice little touch just to add some extra thickness in. And what a vast difference when you take it off. So moving on from that section, we move into the filters. Now, these filters affect the input into the room, into the chamber. So it's useful we can take out some low end and have it not in there straight away from the offset. I should have seen it coming. And we've got our frequency point for the roll off and our type of cut. Running. Maybe you would be fine. I thought I'm for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make. We've also got the gain or cut we can push on the filter. Um, uh, a couple of different frequency points. Now it snaps to these points as well. So we've got 2.7, 3.5, and 10 kilohertz. Moving on to mix, we've got our standard wet dry mix, but we've also got the reverb separated out. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe you would be fine. And last but not least, we've got our overall output and a nice meter just to let us know where we're going, which should correlate with everything we see in a logic. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. So we're just going to snap this forward a little bit. So we've got a solid loop of the vocal here. And what we're going to do now is just make some adjustments in terms of the chamber, just so we can hear the difference. I'm going to turn off Steed, turn off the filters, and we're just going to go through those different mic placements and the different room positions. I should have seen it coming. 
I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. I fought him for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make it, but we didn't. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. I fought him for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could. I quite like that uh, position there with those mics for this particular vocal. I'm just going to do the speaker change around now just to really show you the, the huge difference that makes the speaker placement. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. No, completely different Maybe texture now. Be fine. I fought him for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make it, but we didn't. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. Now we're just going to have a listen to the other rooms. The mirror room is really, really bright. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. And for the mirror, if we feed it into Steed as well, it really exaggerates it. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running, maybe it would be fine. I thought I'm for the same trick. So I really quite like feeding that into Steed with that extra drive we've got there. It takes the, the real high end on the vocal and gives it like that sort of um, that 50s um, ribbon mic distortion feel. I should have seen it coming, I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Just have a little listen to Stone. Stone's a lot darker. Um, this is quite a high end vocal. It's a little bit harder to perceive. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. I thought I'm for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make it, but we didn't. I should have seen it coming. I'm just going to start on chamber. I'm going to leave all the settings the same and I'll just go through chamber, mirror, stone and then backwards. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. I thought I'm for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make it, but we didn't. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. I thought I'm for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make it, but we didn't. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is actually just try and mix it so that I really like it. And then I'm going to try that uh, speaker adjustment on the backing vocals and see if we can blend those two together. So from what I was listening to, I think I'm going to use mirror, uh, be a bit harsh with it and then dial it back on the bus. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. So for me, I think that's going to be it about there. 
I uh, quite like that. What we're going to do is just save that. What we're going to do now is take all the other vocal layers. I'm going to put them in a different room. So we're going to do back in chambers. I'm just going to copy the plugin over. So we've got our exact same settings. Close this one. Bring this one up. And we're going to go chamber two and just have it pointed that way. And now I will go through and balance these all together, but instead for now, we're just going to add them all in as one so we can kind of get an idea of what we're doing. Cool, that's really thickened it up nicely. I, I I like what's going on there. Let's just take these two. We're going to mute them, so we really want to hear the difference when they come in. So that's really subtly just thickening up the whole thing and giving it its own space. Um, I actually quite like the, the doing the two separately, the lead vocal and the backing vocal. So it keeps the main vocal really isolated, but everything here does its job and backs it up nicely. Um, not tried that before, so that's quite a nice little uh, thing to have come across. Um, ah, that's essentially it, guys. So that's my first look at the Abbey Road Chambers or Abbey Chambers plugin. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. I mean, you come down to it at the end, how many reverbs do you actually need? But there's so much you can get out of this and there's such specifically nice sounds. You can't really go wrong with it, which is a nice touch. Um, just download the demo guys, give it a bash now that you know how to work around it, you know what all the features do. And uh, let me know if it helps you out and improves your music. I mean, feel free to throw uh, comments down below and we'll have a little chat and I can listen to stuff. But uh, overall, I'm impressed with it so far. I'm going to keep playing around with it. I think I'm going to keep it in this track because I like what we've done so far. And then, um, yeah, good luck. I hope the video was helpful and I'll see you on the next one.